Now, let me discuss the uses of the cholinergic drugs. Now, you take this particular cholinergic drugs. The cholinergic drugs, they have muscarinic action that is by acting on the muscarinic receptors and these cholinergic drugs, they also have nicotinic action. Right, they also have nicotinic action. So, because of the action on the muscarinic receptors, we have the muscarinic uses and then because of the action on the nicotinic receptors, then we have the nicotinic uses. Now, now let me discuss the muscarinic uses first. Right, now let me discuss the muscarinic uses first. You take this particular muscarinic uses, first and foremost, the very important thing is these drugs they are used in the treatment of glaucoma right they are used in the treatment of glaucoma right now what is the mechanism of action of these drugs in the treatment of glaucoma i will discuss right glaucoma as such separately i will discuss in detail you take in glaucoma, it is a clinical condition which is characterized by raised intraocular pressure. And by this muscarinic action, the intraocular pressure reduces and thereby the treatment occurs in glaucoma. Next, the other muscarinic use is, you take these particular cholinergic drugs, what do they do to their secretions? It will increase the salivary secretion and they will also increase the lacrimal secretion. So, for that reason, they are used in the treatment of Jogren syndrome. Right, for that reason, they are used in the treatment of Jogren syndrome. Alright, next to the treatment in Jogren syndrome, we have one particular clinical condition which is characterized by dementia in elderly individuals. Remember, dementia in elderly individuals that is called as Alzheimer's disease. So, these cholinergic drugs by their muscarinic action, they are used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Next. Next, because of the muscarinic action, remember, these particular drugs, they are used in the post-operative state. I will discuss in detail in what way they are used in the post-operative state. So, in post-operative state, right, in post-operative state, these particular cholinergic drugs are being used by their muscarinic action next the other thing is they are used in the treatment of belladonna poisoning okay so they are also used in the treatment of belladonna poisoning and apart from this particular the belladonna poisoning these drugs because of their muscarinic uses they are useful for the diagnosis of bronchial hyperreactivity Right, they are also useful for the diagnosis of bronchial, right, diagnosis of bronchial hyperreactivity. Okay, now let me discuss one by one. You take in case of glaucoma. Now, what are those group of cholinergic drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma? Is we have three important drugs. One is your pilocarpine. The other drug is physostigmine. The other one is ecotheophate. So these are the three drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma. That is pilocarpine, physostigmine and as well as ecotheophate. Next, you take in case of Jogren syndrome, mainly to increase the salivary secretions and as well as the lacrimal secretions. The drugs which are used are the pilocarpine, and the other drug is sevimilain, right? Sevimilain is another drug which is used in the treatment of Jogren syndrome. And you take in case of Alzheimer's disease, that is dementia in elderly. The drugs which are used are tacrin, then we have donapezil, then we have rivastigmin, and then galantamine. So these are the drugs which are used in Alzheimer's disease. Coming to the post-operative conditions now in post-operative conditions why these drugs are used here remember in post-operative state 
right in post operative state remember these particular skeletal muscle relaxants or these anesthetic drugs whichever are used in during surgery they will cause the paralytic ileus right they will cause the paralytic ileus now what is this paralytic ileus this is the clinical condition which is the characterized by complete paralysis of the gastrointestinal tract there is no gastrointestinal motility right gastrointestinal motility is not there in these patients with the paralytic ileus now what is the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the GAT the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the GAT is they will increase the gastrointestinal motility right they will increase the gastrointestinal motility so in the treatment of the paralytic ileus the cholinergic drugs which are used is one we have bethanacol and then we have neostigmin right so these bethanacol and neostigmin is used for the paralytic ileus in the post operative state next next you take the other post operative clinical condition where these cholinergic drugs are used the other thing is in case of urinary retention right the other thing is in case of urinary retention now remember in case of urinary retention right in the post operative state there will be the paralysis of the detrusor muscle as well so there will be urinary retention so what do we want that the detrusor activity or the urinary bladder activity has to be recovered right so for this urinary retention the cholinergic drugs what we use is we use bethanacol and the other drug is neostigmin so remember either in your paralytic ileus or urinary retention the drugs what we use is bethanacol and as well as neostigmin next next is in case of belladonna poisoning that is atropa belladonna poisoning the drug what we use is physostigmin right the drug what we use is the physostigmin remember this one very very important point next the other place where we use this muscarinic drugs is they are used in the diagnosis of bronchial hyperreactivity right mainly you take in case of atopic asthma in order to check whether there is bronchial hyperreactivity is there or not we use this particular cholinergic drugs via their muscarinic action and what is that particular drug we use for diagnosis of bronchial hyperreactivity is we use methacholine right we use this particular methacholine so methacholine is the drug which is used for the diagnosis of bronchial hyperreactivity so remember these are the uses of cholinergic drugs via the action on the muscarinic receptors now let me discuss the uses of the cholinergic drugs via the nicotinic action right let me discuss the nicotinic uses now let me discuss the nicotinic uses of this cholinergic drugs now this nicotinic uses is by stimulating the nicotinic receptors by these cholinergic drugs first and foremost the very important use is the reversal of the muscle relaxants right by the skeletal muscle relaxants the muscles they get completely relaxed and how do you think these particular muscles they get improved is by the usage of the nicotinic drugs right or otherwise in a normal individual the acetylcholine will go and act on the nicotinic receptors there will be reversal of the muscle relaxation now let me tell you what are those particular group of drugs which are used for the reversal of muscle relaxants right so if you take the nicotinic uses right number one for the reversal of right for the reversal of muscle relaxants right for the reversal of the muscle relaxants now what are those drugs which are used for the reversal of the muscle relaxants is we have two important drugs one is neostigmin and the other important drug is physostigmin right the other important drug is physostigmin 
okay that is one of your nicotinic use the other nicotinic use is in the treatment of myasthenia gravis remember in case of myasthenia gravis right in case of myasthenia gravis these nicotinic uses will be for diagnostic purpose and as well as for the treatment purpose now for the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis right for the diagnosis of the myasthenia gravis the drug what we use is edrophonium right we have what is called as edrophonium test right edrophonium and for the treatment of myasthenia gravis the cholinergic drugs which are used are right that is for the treatment that is neostigmine that is one important drug and the other drug is pyridostigmine okay so neostigmine and as well as pyridostigmine they are useful for the treatment purpose in patients with myasthenia gravis next the other thing is in the treatment of cobra bite right in the treatment of the cobra bite this nicotinic uses are there now in cobra bite the drugs which are used is again your neostigmine and as well as the pyridostigmine as well as the pyridostigmine okay so these are the nicotinic uses of the cholinergic drugs one in case of reversal of muscle relaxation two in the diagnosis and the treatment of myasthenia gravis three in the treatment of the cobra bite the drugs which we use is neostigmine and as well as pyridostigmine